Shalom family. Welcome to another teaching from Tail Ministries. The title of this teaching is Jews in Europe. What happened to our ancestors, the black Jews, when they were in Europe? Family, what we have to do is make sure we take control of our own story. And we need to tell our own story. Now, granted, uh, we have to use a lot of the information from um, Europeans because Europeans wrote a lot of things down. Now, um, many people say, well, the Africans, right? Who, you know, anybody in Africa is considered African, right? But, um, you know, we are really the true Hebrews uh, that our ancestors went to Africa from what they call the Middle East. And so we, we need to make sure that we control our own story. Um, because, um, what happens is that as you study, you know, over the course of centuries and, you know, you, you will find that the Europeans slowly started to try to hide who we were. Now, many of us know this already. Many of the Gentiles don't. And so you have to go to the older text that, you know, was trying to stay true to the, um, to the history. Now, many state that the Africans didn't have any written history. It was all oral, which isn't true. Uh, the problem is that many of the Europeans did not want to translate our text. So, you know, I'm not covering, I'm not going to cover this, what I'm about to say in this teaching, but as you do research, you will find out that uh, Timbuktu, uh, which was one of the largest uh, centers for knowledge in Africa, well, really in the world. Uh, Timbuktu had a library that was probably great, as great or greater than the Library of Alexandria in Europe. So, uh, and there's tons and tons of books that are just now getting digitized uh, from the Timbuktu uh, books. And, uh, but, you know, they got to be translated from Arabic into something we can understand. And of course, the Europeans not going to finance African history. So, you know, it would have to be those billionaires that's in Africa. They need to finance it. They need to help get it done because uh, I guarantee you uh, there's more there than just astrology. I mean, a lot of times they go and tell you about, you know, uh, Islam and the Quran and, you know, they, they discuss uh, things about the the zodiac okay that's fine but they won't talk about the jews that live there as well which as you study some of the other text uh historical documents from the europeans and from the arabs uh you will find out that yes there were jews in timbuktu as well and they were black okay you got you know el adrisi who's a muslim uh historian and uh, there's, uh, I think the other guy, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's El Batisi, I think is one of the other historians. And there's many others, right? And, uh, and those are Arabic or Muslim scholars, okay? So uh, in this teaching, we're going to discuss what happened to our ancestors when they were in Europe. And it, there, there's a dynamic that, you know, you sort of have to feel your way through as you go because... You know, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, the Europeans aren't the only ones that enslaved the Africans. Well, you know, they talk about the Arab slave trade. Well, you really shouldn't separate the two. And the reason why you shouldn't separate the two is because they were trading with, the, with each other. If you look at the timeline of the European slave trade and the Arab slave trade, when, when they got into their heights, you know, they were trading with one another. So this is from Wikipedia. Our enemies are Europeans and Arabs. Okay, the Arab slave trade was the intersection of slavery and trade in the Arab world, mainly in Western Asia, North Africa, East Africa, and Europe. See, everyone wants to ignore Europe. This border occurred chiefly between the medieval era and the early 20th century. The trade was conducted through slave markets in these areas with the slaves captured mostly from Africa's interior and Southern Europe. So we, we understand here that there was a trade going on between these particular locations. 
and Europe was involved in it. That's why, you know, as you start studying this thing, you find out that a lot of this stuff started around the same time. And really the driving force behind it was Europe. Okay, when the Pope, you know, gave his dumb diversus, right? And even before then, when they, you know, tried to, well, you'll see as we go. So, convert or be expelled. The Spanish Inquisition lasted about 350 years. It was it was begun in 1478 by Queen Isabella of Castile to search out converted Jews secretly practicing their original faith. In 1483, it was broadened as a means of persecution, any and all heretics. The Spanish Inquisition was not completely abolished until 1834. So, one of the things you're going to see as you study family is that, you know, the Jews that con converted, there was a forced conversion to Catholicism and some became I guess you would say crypto Catholics or crypto Jews or whatever right yeah I would say crypto Jews right because they're doing that in secret being Jews but the, in in public they were converted Roman Catholics so you know in this picture on the right they show uh, you know a white woman being tied to the pole but I'm not saying some of them weren't because Here's the thing, family. You got to understand the dynamic during that time. And you see this in the scriptures as well, where even in the book of Esther, there, you know, people were converting to, to the religion of the Jews. I don't want to say Judaism because Judaism is Talmudism. There were people in, in the book of Esther converting to the religion of the Jews, our people. Okay. And so all throughout the times, all throughout the centuries, people were converting to our belief system. Now, why would they do that? Because, remember, they saw the power of the Most High. Everyone was scared when our people came, okay? So they wanted to convert. And we can go into stories in the Bible where, you know, they were like, you know, hey, we, we don't want to deal with them Jews because they got a strong God. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, I just want to make the point that a lot of, there was a lot of conversion going on, a ton of conversion, which nobody wants to talk about. So there were two types of Jews. There has always been two types of Jews, right? Now, the reason why I limited them to two types of Jews, because it's the ones that are predominant. Okay, there were the white converted Jews and the original black Jews. Both of these lived in Europe. Some lived in Spain, Portugal, and London, and other places on in the world, in that known world, okay? The original black Jews' main abode was in Africa. Okay, now, the reason why I say just two types, because, you know, you end up finding out that other cultures like, you know, Arabian cultures and all of these people converted to the religion of the Jews. Okay, and, you know, you had people from all over the place, you know, what we call the Middle East converting to the religion of the Jews. Now, they're not necessarily white, but they're not black. Okay, so just to make it simple, as opposed to me saying, you know, um, you know, all of the different variations of colors of the different group people groups that converted to Judaism, let's just simplify it to white converted Jews and original black Jews. Okay, that's how we're going to refer to it. Now, when I say white converted Jews, of course, it includes the Ashkenaz, right, who's our greatest enemy. Okay, one of our greatest enemy, our greatest enemy truly is Roman Catholicism. But, uh, you know, let's, let's look at the white converted Jews as being all people who converted to the religion of the Jews. Okay, in, in other words, everybody other than black. So Gentiles who converted, that's a better statement. So this is from the narratives of travels and discoveries in northern and central Africa by Dixon Denham. No, said I, and, and, and we've covered this before in other, sh other teachings. No, said I, Christians then, even so replied, I, I have read of you. You are better than Jews, said he. Are Jews white like you? No, replied I, rather more like yourself, very dark. Really, said the sheik. Why are they not quite white? They are a bad people. After saying a full hour, he took my hand and said, I see you are a sultan. I never saw anybody like you. The sight of you is as pleasing to my eyes as your words are to my ears. My heart says you are my friend. May you die at your own tents and in the arms of your wives and family. So, 
we know this here, and we've discussed this before. The question is, okay, are you a Jew? And are those Jews white like you? And the reply was, no, they are very dark. Okay, like yourself. So here it shows that the, the true Jews are very dark. Now, the other thing we need to take note here is that they are a bad people. Now, why, do we, why did they see us this way? Why did they see us as a bad people? And you got to understand, during this time, Israel had fallen away from the faith. Israel went serving other gods. Israel served idols, which is why they went into captivity. Because they were stiff-necked, hard-headed people. That's a fact. And we see the same thing today. Okay, we see a lot of this stiff-neckedness in our people. Hard-headed. They don't listen. You can come to them with evidence and proof and all this. And, and they stick their hands in their ears. And they want to do what they want to do. And they don't want to do what the Most High has commanded them to do. Our people are stiff-necked, even to this day. Now, a lot of us who are born again, we're being changed from within. And we're renewing our mind by the word of God. Okay, so now, or, or the word of Yah. And so now, okay, that, that, that hard heart is becoming soft. Because the Most High said he would give us a soft heart or a heart of flesh. Okay, but the world saw us as a bad people. Which is why you could get away with what they got away with. That grand conspiracy of Psalms 83. So convert to Catholicism or go into slavery. So this is from America being an accurate description of the new world by John Ogilby. Page 574. The Portuguese that dwelt on this island informed the Netherlanders that few lived above 50 years there. Yet notwithstanding the great gain tempted them to tarry several of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills, that John the Third, King of Portugal, sent a colony thither above two hundred years before, whom though the wholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate, for he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Tomé, or Sao Tomé, that so they might be better use of the air, that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion, and caused their children to be baptized, from whom, coming thither in great numbers, most of the present inhabitants were descended. So here it tells us a lot. There are a lot of Negroes, okay, were sent to Sao Tome, and those Negroes were Jews. And why were they sent to Sao Tome? They were in Guinea and Angola. Why were they sent there? Okay, they originally were coming from there, but why were they sent there to Sao Tome? Why were they sent to Guinea? Why were they sent to Angola? So that they could become slaves. For slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion. That's why they were sent to those colonies. To work the sugar mills. So they didn't just kick them out of Europe. Just to kick them out of Europe. They kicked them out of Europe into slavery. And they sent them to the colonies. Of Spain and Portugal. In Africa. So that they may pick. And, and you know grow and pick the uh, sugar cane. So Sao Tome. So this, this this particular book is called Portuguese Exploration to the West and Formation of Brazil, 1450 to 1800. Now remember in that one we just read, you had who? Who was the king? King John. Now in Spanish it's King Juan. Okay, so King John the Third was the king of Portugal. Okay, so here we're gonna read. Uh, from Portuguese exploration to the West and the formation of Brazil. By the year 1470, the Portuguese had found the equatorial island of Sao Tome, that's St. Thomas that we saw in the other uh, book, in the Guinean Gulf, remember they sent to Guinea, off the African coast. The climate proved to be extremely wholesome for Europeans, and settlement was slow, okay? Unwholesome. So it was unwholesome. So Europeans couldn't handle the weather. Right, they couldn't handle the sun, they couldn't handle the environment, they died of an early age. Okay, so the official chronicler of King Juan 
which is John, that we saw in the other one, Garcia de Resende reports on one of the methods to populate this island that also throws some light on the tra tragic form of the Jewish participation in the Portuguese Atlantic Empire. The king had allowed Jewish refugees from Spain from where they had been expelled in 1492 to remain in Portugal only in return for payment of an enormous ransom. So the rich Jews, the rich black Jews didn't get sent to the islands when they got kicked out of Spain. The Portuguese king, John, said, okay, I'll take your money. You can stay here. In 1493, those who could not pay had their children taken away from them, baptized by force, and reported and deported to Sao Tome in order to be raised as Christians and to help populate the island that the king had just leased to Alvaro de Camina at an annual rent of a hundred thousand reis. Nothing is known of their further fate, although later chroniclers attribute the thriving sugar production on the island to the talents of these deported children and their offspring. So here what we see, family. So first they got kicked out of Spain, right? So when they got kicked out of Spain, the rich Jews, black Jews, went to Portugal. The Portuguese king said, okay, you can stay so long as you got the money. Typical of Europeans, right? So then after that, if they couldn't pay, their children were sent where? To Africa. So the children were taken away from them and sent to Sao Tome to work the sugar canes. Okay? So family, we need to understand this is our history. This is the story. This is the story that of what happened during you know the time of the Inquisition, during the time of both the European and the Arab slave trade. Okay? So remember, they were trading amongst different nations and Europe was part of it. The Middle East, what we call the Middle East was part of it. And we were the cargo. We were the goods. We were the resources to work their plantations. So what they do is, and you will see it as we go, what they, what they will do is, they will either just use the word Jew, right? As you get into the more later books, they'll just use the word Jew. So then you use your mind based upon what you're understanding today that that means the white Jews. But then you go back to the older books and you see that, no, they're dealing with the black Jews. Okay. Ban is from Europe to Africa. This is from Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt by John Ogilvy. Now, we've covered this before as well, but I wanted it here, be here because in context, we can see what we just learned about what happened with Spain, getting kicked out of Spain, the rich blacks going to Portugal and then those blacks who couldn't pay for their kids who, who couldn't pay those taxes got kicked to Africa which was to the slave plantations they make it look like they just got kicked out right they make it look like they just got kicked out of Europe no they got kicked out of Europe to go into slavery they got kicked out of Europe to go into slavery Many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both sides of the river Niger. We know that's in Africa, right? Others are Asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian or from Judea wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Saracens, and Christians or shall we say Roman Catholics, or else such as came out of Europe, whence they were what? Banished. Okay, we just saw that. We, they were banished from Spain. They were banished from Portugal. They were also banished from London family. So out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, we saw that, didn't we? Out of the low country in 1350, out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. These all defer inhabit and are divided into several tribes having no dominion. Though both wealthy and numerous. So remember, 
our fan, our people were wealthy. They had gold, they had silver, they traded. Okay, and they were in Europe. And we saw what? The ones who were kicked out of Spain did what? Paid the king of Portugal to stay there. And if they couldn't pay the taxes and everything, they got kicked out and their children were taken away from them and they were kicked out and sent into slavery to those colonies in Africa run by Spain and Portugal. So they were wealthy. Okay. But despised of all nations. So we, we discussed that before. Remember that, that one that said, well, you know, uh, no, they're very black. The Jews are black, but they are bad people. See here, they say, but despised of all nations and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be Muslims unless first baptized and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. The Kafirs or Libertines, Kafirs means black. The Kafirs are Libertines who hold many antithetical tenets live together promiscuously without ceremony. So basically, they get married, they have sex without a ceremony. Okay? Like our families or Adamites, following their sensuality and unbridled lust, inhabiting from Mozambique to the Cape of Good Hope. The idolaters are numerous in Negro land, upper and lower Ethiopia and towards the great ocean, except as we hinted before, some few who by the industry of the Portuguese and Spaniards have been converted and baptized in several places. So, fam, what we see here is our people was hated. Now, they say our people were highly sexed. Now, uh, see, when you look at Europeans, Europeans at that time, they only married one person, <clears throat> okay? And they went through this, this ceremony uh, of being married like we do today. But in what we call the African traditions, which is the Hebrew traditions, and, and we see that in a relationship, you know, with Jacob and with Isaac and all of them, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, really. We, we see that <clears throat> they had concubines. We see that they had multiple wives, right? And, and in those customs, what they did, the way you were married is you laid with the person. So when you laid with the person, you were married right now under what we call African tradition today, which was Hebrew tradition. They had multiple wives, but they had to take care of them. Okay. They had to be able to take care of those multiple wives. So the Europeans say, well, you know, they have unbridled lust. I mean, what man does it? You know what I'm saying? What young man does it? But the point being is, under their traditions, it wasn't wrong because that was a marriage ritual in and of itself. Okay? It's not like today where we would just go around and just sleep around and leave a bunch of babies hanging around like we do today. Under the Jewish tradition and under those laws, they had to take care of those women because they were married to those women and they had to pay a dowry. Okay? Now, I'm sure some people may have did it differently, but this is how it was. So expelled from Portugal back to Africa. And we, and we discussed that. We discussed how, you know, those in Portugal, you know, who didn't have the money got sent to, to Sao Tome. So this is from the Nautical Magazine and Journal of Papers on Subjects Connected, Volume 39. Barbara states that in the reign of Don John II, about the close of the 15th century, large numbers of Jews were expelled from Portugal and taken to the coast of southern Guinea. That the island of St. Thomas, which is Sao Tome, which is not more than 100 miles. Okay, so here we see, once again, validation that the, those Jews, and we saw that they were black, they were sent to Africa, right, to work the sugar mills. Okay, we saw that. This is the story. And remember, all of this happened during the both the Arab slave trade and the Inquisition. See, nobody wants to talk about the Inquisition because when you talk about the Inquisition, a lot of times they're going to talk about Fox's books of martyrs, Fox's book of martyrs. And, and in there you see a lot of what you call Christians and really mainly European Christians being burned at the stake. Okay, but they don't tell you about the fact that initially, as we saw, 
it was going against the converted Jews because they converted to Catholicism, but they were secretly still practicing what we call the religion of the Jews. Because I don't want to use Judaism. I don't like that term because that's what the modern Jews is. And modern Judaism is Talmudism, and that's not what our people follow. So, <clears throat> so this is from the book, France Intelligencer, Volume 10. But this is not all. Other curious details reached Dr. Philip from another source. A Jew who had accompanied a German traveler as far as Timbuktu, found near the boundary of Bambara, a large number of Jewish Negroes. So, Timbuktu family is near Mali. Okay, now Timbuktu is in Africa. It's still an African uh, city. Okay, nearly every family among them possessed the Law of Moses. So, they say in Timbuktu they had the Law of Moses. If you go do some research on Timbuktu, you will see that there's a ton of books. I mean, they say at least 500,000 books that were hidden. Okay, because when the Europeans came there, they tried to burn all of, all of the books in the library. So they, the rich families in Timbuktu took their books and hid them. So here we see in Timbuktu, what did they have? They had a parchment. Okay. They had a parchment. Nearly every family among them possessed the law of what? Moses. Written upon parchment. Where is it today? I guarantee you it is still undeciphered, sitting under some houses, and then some of them that are given to the Baba Sanctuary. Okay, it's called Baba. Uh, I forgot what it is, but it's, it's basically um, it's an organization that they can take all of those books that were hidden by the families. Okay, hidden by the families underneath their own homes to hide them from the Europeans because the Europeans wanted to hide our history. They wanted to keep this you know, destroy anything that, that tells you who we are. But they're working on translations now. And it's going to take a while. You know why? Because there's, there's not, a, there's, you don't have the American or the European money behind it to translate it, right? So you have that African nation itself paying for, one, the digitization of those books, right? And then the translation of those books from Arabic. But here we see that each one of them, what does it say? Nearly every family among them possess what? The law of Moses written upon parchment. Where is this? Timbuktu. So I'm going to say this to that. Let me not. Let me, let me pull it back a little bit, family. I'm going to say this to that, that person who contacted me, who said he wanted to debate me. And I was going to give him the privilege to debate me on air. But then he wants to tell me how he wants to debate me on my show. So then he wants to tell me, I'm going to debate you in the comment section. I say, why would I want to debate you in the comment section so that you can just delete it once you lose? I want the whole world to see that you lose. Why? Because you don't have the fortitude, you don't have the humility enough to first do a research on what you're coming up against. Because I told the brother, I ain't going to call him a brother because I don't know who he is. But anyway, he wasn't a brother, if you know what I mean. So I say, well, look, you got a big hill to climb, dude. Like the documentation family I'm showing you today. He has a huge hill to climb to prove that the Negro is not the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. He has a huge way to go. But he was arrogant. But you all know me, family. I'm not going to just sit there and take it. Okay? I'm not going to just sit there and take it. You're going to come here, and you're going to tell me that my people are not the people of the book. But I'm telling you I got the proof. But you want to hear that, you know, well, what he think is, he think I'm like the camps. Because he says, well, I already debated people, and I already did this, and you're not going to shut me down. I'm like, dude, there's not camp doctrine here, dude. Far from it. Anyway. Let's get back. Nearly every family among them possessed the law of Moses written upon parchment. Although they speak of the prophets, they have not their writings. Their prayers differ from those of other Jews and are committed to little leaves of parchment stitched together and contain numerous passages derived from the Psalms. 
These Jews have mingled some of the superstition of the oral law, which they have not committed to writing with those of their neighbors, the Muslims, and of the heathen. So they started mixing their own religion with those of the Muslims. And you, you can see why, you can see that today, right? You can see that in Islam today. They enjoy equal liberty with the other subjects of the African chiefs. And they have their synagogues and their rabbis. The explanation which they give of themselves and in connection with their black skin is this. Now listen to this family. That after the destruction of Jerusalem, at the time of the first captivity, some of their ancestors having neither goods nor lands fled to the desert. The fatigue which they endured was so great that nearly all the females died by the way. So basically, family, when they left Jerusalem and they were fleeing for their lives and going into Africa, they went into the desert, which is the Sahara Desert. <coughs> and you can find that other places, family, where you had the Jews in the Sahara Desert. And a lot of those Jews, like, for instance, when you look at the law that the Pope uh, created, Dumb Diverses, he said that the Berbers were to be perpetual slaves. Well, Berbers back then were black. And like the Toregs, the Toregs of Africa are black Jews. Okay, I can prove that too. Okay, so Israel is everywhere. Okay, all right. So the fatigue which they endured was so great that nearly all the females died on the way. The children of Ham received them with kindness and by the intermarriage with their daughters who were black communicated their color to their children. These children became generation by generation of a deeper blue until now no difference of color distinguishes the children of Shem and those of Ham. The form of their features, however, is very different from that of the Negroes around them. So family, what we see here, just like the Bible said, who did the Jews marry? Hamites and Canaanites. When, the, when our people fled from what they call the Middle East, which is Jerusalem, they fled into Africa. Why? To go be with the people that they always married, the Hamites and the Canaanites. And this particular scholar or author says we still went what? To Africa. And who did we marry? The Hamites. And that they, they married and, and intermingled for so long that they became a deeper blue, which, which is that dark black, that dark, dark blackness. So most of Israel were brown or red, okay? They weren't dark, dark black. But we intermarried with Ham and became darker. And you can find this in the scriptures too. That's why, you know, when someone comes and say, well, the Negro isn't really the true Hebrews of the Bible, I'm like, dude, you have no leg to stand on. None. Because we have historical and biblical precedence for our position which you don't. What you do, you come through feelings. We have proof. So what we need to take from this family is that the Jews and it's, who are Negroes, remember that, keep that in your mind that the Negro is the Jew and the Jew is the Negro. You're going to see as we go on how the scholars, the ones who don't want to like totally lie they'll just use negro and they, they won't say jewish negroes and they won't make the connection between the jews and the negroes but they're gonna give you the same time period so we're going to continue from here family and i'm not going to read this next section about the you and the lamb that's an interesting discussion in and of itself because there's a tribe called you right in africa and you it can also mean lamb which is very interesting of itself but that's sort of another topic black jews in africa this is from a tribute for the negro being a vindication of the moral intellectual and religious capabilities of the colored portion of mankind with, with particular reference to the african race by armistead wilson 1819-1868 it is probably an allusion to this case that Pennington in his textbook says the descendants of a colony of Jews originally from Judea settled on the coast of Africa are black. 
And Rosette declares that there are many negresses in the Algerine country, whither they have doubtless been brought. So, once again, family, we see that the Jews are black. We see that they came from where? Originally, where did they come from? He said from Judea. Where did they come from? Judea. Whatever the name of the guy who wanted to debate me, where did they come from? Judea. Check my references, bro. Judea. What color were they, bro? Black. If you're going to come to fight, come prepared. If you're going to come to debate, come prepared. Because one thing you're going to know about tail, we do our research. And we are going to be line upon line, precept upon precept, and we are going to have our references. So I don't mind if you come with some references. Just make sure you bring them and bring more than one. Because sometimes what y'all want to do is take one book. We got tons of books by your people that say we are the true Hebrews. So here, uh, the title of this book, this is a UNESCO study, and it's called The African Slave Trade from the 15th to the 19th century. So the African slave trade is why they, they were banished to Africa. As I showed you, family, they were sent from Spain to Africa, to Angola, to Guinea, to Sao Tome, and they were black. And they went there because of the slave trade for what? The sugar mills. Now, here, the only difference you're going to see is that they mention Negroes and not Jewish Negroes. But it's the same situation, same thing that was happening now, but the people are Negroes. I'm making my case. This is what happened to our people in Europe. They got sent into slavery. They did not want to convert to Roman Catholicism. I showed you that. Page 105. Sugar industry and slave uprising in African archipelago. So, we saw before, family, the Jews were kicked, what, out of Spain, out of Portugal, what, to Sao Tome, right? What, to work the sugar mills. Who, who was kicked out of Europe? The Jews. For what? To work what? The sugar mills. After Cape Verde and Biagos, the Portuguese tried to occupy Sao Tome, the island of Fernando Po, the largest which was already inhabited at that time by Bubis Negroes, triumphantly resisted the Portuguese invaders. Formosa remained theoretically under Portuguese sovereignty right until 1777 which, as the population of Sao Tome increased, enabled the col colonialists to draw on fresh supplies of slaves. On a treaty between Spain and Portugal, ratified on March 11, 1778, Spain was granted rights over Fernando Po and Anno Bomb and entitled to engage freely in the slave trade along the African coast from Cape Formoso at the mouth of the Niger as far as Cape Lopo, Gan Calvin, south of Gabon estuary in exchange for Catarina Island and the Sacramento colony in South America, which came under Portuguese rule. It was not until 1858, however, that Spanish sovereignty was established firmly by an expedition led by Commander Carlos Chacon. Through the development of the sugar industry in Sao Tome in the 16th century at the instigation of the Jewish element in the population, the island had a considerable export trade with ramifications in the Mediterranean and Europe. As early as 1574, there were 60 engejos producing over 150,000 arrobas of sugar. During the years of 1575 to 80, the production had increased to 200,000 arrobas. By the end of the century, it had reached 300,000. Tradition has it that a vessel loaded with slaves from Angola was wrecked between 1540 and 1550 near the St. Pedras Islands, not far from the southeast coast of Sao Tome. 
most of the Negroes, let's just say Jews, most of the Negro Jews were drowned or eaten by sharks. Only a few dozen survivors reached land. The fine bay of the Lulas where they landed was uninhabited at the beginning of the 16th century, as were the nearby southern regions of the island. They settled to the northeast of the bay in the mountains, which were later to take their name, and they lived protected by the forest, raising pigs, cutting wood, engaging in typically African form of agriculture. Furthermore, Kahuna Mato states that up until 1550, the island prospered, and the Angolese did not become a threat until the second half of the century. So, <coughs> so some of you are going to say, well, they were raising pigs. How could they be Jews? Because they took on the culture of the people that they lived around, and they married Hamites, and they also married some Portuguese, as, as, you, as you read other documents, right? And some of those Portuguese uh, were on that island taking care of the, you know, the business of the Portuguese colony. Okay, and remember, the reason why Israel went into captivity is what? They worshiped other gods. They worshiped idols. Scripture tells you that, which they were not obeying the Most High. So, yes, they were eating pigs too, raising pigs too. In 1574, he said they revolted, drawing other Negroes into the fray, and armed with bows and assegais, they invaded the Facendas Agricolas, or agricultural estates, and the city, sacking everything, pillaging and destroying the Agajenos, and killing anyone who tried to stop them. The terror was such that, years later, in 1593, Philip I commuted the sentence of banishment to five years for those exiles who had participated as volunteers in suppressing the revolt. The exiles. What exiles? When did the Negroes become exiles? Remember, we saw that they were exiled where? From Spain and Portugal. Where? To Sao Tome. This had already been done in the case of other convicts who fought against the slaves in 1584. Now, just to let you know, family, Sao Tome was also a prison colony. Okay, for some of the Portuguese, and they were the ones running the business. Okay, Cojuna Matos also mentions the last and most destructive revolt of the Angolese, the one which occurred in 1693 and ended with the capture of Negro women in the surrounding fazendas. It was Matus Pires, Capital do Mato or da Serra, who drove them back into the mountains and rescued the captives. However, Sao Tome had already lost a large production of his Maradores inhabitants, or uh, proportion, I'm sorry, proportion of his inhabitants, almost a century earlier. The richer ones having left for Brazil for fear of the Negro revolts. So they sent our people where? To Sao Tome to work the sugar canes. They sent them to Angola, right, to Guinea. This was slave territory. This was territory owned and controlled by Spain and Portugal. Now we can see the full story that they were kicked out because they would not convert to Roman Catholicism. So they were sent to the slave plantation of Sao Tome to work the sugar cane. Well, they say sugar mills. Two documents dated 1536 lead us to think that the first act of violence of the Angolese did not occur in 1574, as was believed, but around the years of 1530 to 40, at which time the king of Portugal, John III, remember him? Who did, what did John III do? He kicked them out of Portugal, where? To Sao Tome. After again receiving, who did he kick out though, family? Jews. After again receiving alarming reports from Sao Tome, wrote that he was sending Paulo Nunes with arms to restore order. Three days later, he wrote again, the matter was urgent, to the island authorities to tell them that Paulo Nunes would not be going. In fact, he demanded extraordinary privileges to command the Capitina, which could not be granted in view of the fact that a corregidor or mayor had already been appointed with authority to act in the island against the rebel Negroes and with the mission of pacifying them. <clears throat> the revolt had broken out several months beforehand since the king had to appoint a mayor and send him out with instructions to deal with it. 
The king must then have received further information to the effect that the insurrection had spread. So what happened? Our people said, look, enough of this slavery crap. We were rebelling. So they started fighting back. In and out, in and out. They were going to the forest. They just come out of the forest and they'd fight. So they, they really put a hindrance to the, the gathering of the sugar. So when they tried to, you know, keep the slave system going within Sao Tome, they started losing money. They started losing money because they kept getting hit. Our people kept hitting them, right? Because they still had our people held. So some of these were came out of Angola to, to attack Sao Tome. Because they enslaved our people and had them picking what? Sugar cane. Which is why what? They brought us to the Americas. They brought us to Brazil to do what? Raise sugar cane. Later on, it started being cotton. Once again, this is our story, family. And this is the truth that they don't want to tell you. So the reason our ancestors were kicked out of Europe was because they would not convert to Roman Catholicism. They were sent to Sao Tome and Angola and other islands around Africa because these were Portuguese and Spanish colonies that mostly traded in sugarcane. When our people were sent from Europe to these islands, it was to be sent into slavery. Ever since Israel has been in existence, they have been in and out of slavery to various people because of idolatry and because of being stiff-necked. You can still see the stiff-necked attitudes in many of our people today. You really can. We need to repent and seek the Lord Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah. We need to repent as a nation and stop following man, but follow the Most High. So, family, there's a lot of stuff that I could talk about. There's a lot of stuff I could talk about, you know, and, and, and how all of this fits in with, you know, more about Mali and more about Timbuktu and about what happened there. You know, and, and the other thing is, too, family, you got to realize there's a lot of dynamics going on. And so, like, for instance, a lot of time people tell you about the Moors. The Moors took over Europe and invaded Europe and that they were Muslims. Well, that's technically true and not fully true because the Moors included Jews, black Jews. They don't tell you that. They make you think it was just all Muslims. No, the ruling empire that attacked was Moors. What we call Morocco. But they had Jews amongst them, amongst their army as well. Which is one of the reasons of why they were in Europe. The other reason they were in Europe, because they did a lot of trading. They sold a lot of goods and they had a lot of money and they, they bought a lot of stuff. Nobody teaching you this, are they? This is our history. This is what's happened in Europe. This is why Rome went against us. This is the reason for the Inquisition. Now, Rome did try to convert those who, who didn't want to be a part of Roman Catholicism, and they killed a lot of what we call European Christians, believers in Yeshua. They did do that. But the main reason was because the converted Jews were still practicing Judaism while saying they Catholics. So they wanted to make sure that they were fully following Roman Catholicism and no longer practicing the religion of the Jews. And I'm not going to say Judaism. I'm going to say that again because I don't like that word. So family, we need to have an understanding here that your enemy is not going to teach you the truth. Now your enemy might contain the truth. They might have the truth because you know what? They have to have the truth so they can know what to do. They have to have some of that information themselves so they can know how to handle you. Right? But we're not supposed to get access to it, which is why we weren't supposed to read. And they figured they did a, a, a you know good enough job of hiding who we are and stealing our heritage. Where even in Africa, they don't know who they are. It's sort of funny, you know, you got the Bantu tribes, you know, which is Bantu languages. Right, and they are related, but they don't know who they are, and they're different people, and they think they're different people. You got the evil, you got the Shanti, 
right? You got all these different tribes, and they all think they're different people, but they are related. They all Israel, but they've been broken. And our people, just like us, we we're the most broken, the ones who went into slavery amongst the nations as slaves, held captive. That's why when our people do crazy stuff, I don't get upset at them because they're broken. And then some of you don't want to share the truth with them. And I'm talking both Jew and Gentile, Hebrew and Gentile. Y'all don't tell y'all people because y'all scared. Y'all don't want to tell them that they're the true Hebrews, even though you know. Even though you know the Most High says he's going to awaken them in the land of their captivity, you still don't want to be a part of it because you're scared. So you got people like me and my brother and a few others out there who are trying to wake y'all up. Now the difference is, yes, our specific goal right now is to wake up Israel. But on a tangent, we're trying to wake up some of the Gentiles as well. Because guess what? Gentile, if you wake up and know who God's people is, then maybe you can avoid the judgment that's coming. I'm going to tell you, the lie of European Christianity, the lie of European Christianity is subtle. It is subtle. Now, Christ is our Savior. Christ is God in the flesh. Yah in the flesh. Now, Hebrews are like, people don't bother me with that, please. Yes, Yeshua is Yah in the flesh. Okay. So, my point being is, to the Gentiles, you need to understand that for the Yah is going to take care of his people, but he's going to judge those who enslaved his people. So you need to make sure you're correct. And some of you think you're correct, but you're not correct. Okay. Now, how do you get correct? You have to be in the Father's will. You know, it's like when the Lord Jesus came, he said, I only do what I see the Father do. I only say what I hear the Father say. That's what you need to do. That's what I'm doing. I'm only doing what I, I see in his word. I'm only doing what I hear my father tell me do. And I'm not going to do any more and I'm not going to do any less. And I don't care if you don't like me because I preach the truth. Because I'm going to do that because I love him more than I love you. But I do love you enough to tell you the truth. So, please become a Patreon member if you like what we do here at Tail. There's so much we could cover. If we have more support, a ton of information that we just cannot get to. Be led of the Holy Spirit in anything you do. Shalom, family. Love you with the love of the Messiah. Peace and blessings, Israel. Your captivity is ending.